Welcome. So the the real invitation is that what it is that you are really desiring, and we'll clarify that so that you can really have a uh, hopefully and flawless understanding of what that is. Um, what you truly desire is it is already here. So it cannot be had, it cannot be attained. You can't do anything for it. You can't attain, you can't get it. You can't deserve it. You can notice here, because remember that this is an, it's a, a participatory process. So this is, we, we're beginning, okay? So it's happening now. You don't need to wait. You don't need to wait for some thing to happen in the future that will give you permission. It's happening right now. And I'm inviting you to participate right now. So how do you participate? You participate by just simply being aware, just observing, noticing. And you have to understand that whatever the present understanding of that is, so you have an idea of what those words strung together in that sequence means, that's not it. And the reason I point that out is because the, the tendency is the mind says, I already know. I understand these words. I've already done that. It didn't work. But what I'm suggesting to you, well, I'm not even suggesting. I'm just outright telling you. That's not it. So the mind will grow frustrated with this. So it, we'll just get, you know, we'll just get right to it today. Why bother taking a long time? You see, we reach the end of the mind, the limitation of the mind so quickly. The mind, hopefully you find your mind is at its limit. This is, a, well, it's already here. I can't do anything for it. And I don't already understand it, but I think I understand it. Or maybe I think I don't understand it, but how, if I don't understand it, how could it be here? You see the mind, the mind is at its limit. So good, excellent. So this is what you are to observe. You're just to see this. And then you can see that the mind, you can't stop it, although it may stop. Because any effort that you make trying to stop it will just feed it. It's like a Prius. <laughs> Every time you break, you're feeding. So then we, we the mind says, but I don't, what else is there? I don't know what else to do. This is, uh, this is impossible. It's not impossible. What I'm telling you is true. What it is that you truly desire, it's already here. And every attempt to get it, to figure it out, is going to simply feed the habit that obscures the clarity of what it is that's already here. So this is not presently, and I don't know that it could ever be, 
in the domain of the mind. So we're seeing the limitation of the mind. Now notice that the seeing of the limitation of the mind is happening outside of the mind. It's not the mind seeing the limitation of the mind, is it? You see the limitation of the mind. You are aware. You're aware of the frustration and the tantrums and the, you know, all rage and the discouragement and the so forth and so on. And the mind leaps in and it says, well, that's so what? This is stupid. You know, it says, well, duh. That's what the mind likes to say. And then if you fall for it, you already know what happens. Then you're just entranced by the mind seeking for fulfillment in places that you'll never find it. So right now, I mean that sincerely right now in this very moment. So you don't put it off. Don't, don't think that you're going to get the instruction and then put it into practice and then you'll get the result. I'm saying right now. Right now, you can stop without doing the stopping. See, the doing of the stopping is, as I've already pointed out, it just feeds into the very thing that you're trying to stop. But here, it's not about stopping the thing that you need, think you need to stop. That's still giving attention to the mind. What I'm saying is simply observe very subtly and see at a subtle level everything that is occurring. And at first you have no idea what I'm talking about. That sounds so strange, but I promise you, you can see it. And it's not as difficult as you think. In fact, it's not um, new. It's something that you already have awareness of, but you just haven't given attention to it in the right way. So just observe every impulse to do something. That's all I'm talking about. You just observe every impulse to do something and you see that you already, this is the shortcut. I mean, you can take the longer path if you want, but the shortcut is just simply notice that you already are not doing any of that. Even if it's happening, even if that impulse is indulged, which I'm not suggesting that you do, but even if the impulse is indulged, you're not doing it. You are aware of the impulse, the absence of the impulse, the indulgence of the impulse, the resolution of the impulse. So what this is, is not an impulse. Who you are is not an impulse. You're aware of the impulse. For there to be you're aware of change, obviously, right? You're noticing change, movement, let's call it movement. You're aware of movement. It's not hard, you know, here, movement. You're aware of the movement. All of this is movement, right? It's all, there's all movement. Every thought is a movement. Every action is a movement. Every feeling is a movement. It's all a movement. It's a movement of energy. And you're aware of the movement that's, effortless you're just aware of it now you don't like a lot of it that's yeah that's fine but set that aside for a moment and just notice that you're aware of it whether you like it or you don't like it and that the awareness is effortless so you're effortlessly aware of the movement now how can you be aware of all the movement if you are a movement You are the only thing that's not a movement. Uh, you're not a thing, but what else are we going to say? You're not a movement. 
So any movement, you can instantly just be willing to observe it, notice it, and don't take hold of it. Don't take the bait. Right now, I'm just saying right now. So now I want to point out, I mean, some of you will see it. Some, for some of you, it's clearer, and some of you, it's not so clear, and that's fine. But particularly for those of you who are able to recognize this clearly, then I want to point out some things. Okay, so notice that this non movement, this awareness, already is the fulfillment of what you desire. Now, I'm not saying that it is objectively what you think you want. Of course not. Because we think we want all kinds of things, right? I mean, we, but, but you see, all of those objective uh, things, that, the things that we think that we want, you know, we want the better this and the better that, you know, better feelings, better sensations, better relationships, better finances, better house, better community, better parents, better children, better neighbor, you know, better everything, better car. We want all these better things. But just see, actually, and we've done this exercise before, but it's always worth doing again, just see all those things. You can just pick a couple of them, whatever the, are the ones that you've thought are the, the big ones, you know, if I could finally get enlightenment or whatever nonsense you think. Um, if I could get that, then I would, then I would be, then everything would be great. Now just imagine that, imagine that you've got it, imagine that you succeeded. And what you'll find if you're really sincere is that it didn't do it for you. Might be nice, but it didn't really give you the satisfaction that you're looking for. So now we'll look and see and tell the truth that all of these objective things that we think we want, they may be nice. I'm not going to tell you that you should stop entirely because that's, you know, this manifest world is composed of that. I mean, that's, we've already seen that. That's what's happening. There's movement, there's change, things are happening. So that's part of it. So I'm not suggesting you reject the desires. Please understand that. That's a big waste of time and energy, and it will be very painful. I can assure you having gone that path. Really, it's a, a tremendous heartache. You don't want to do it. Not just heartache. It will be achy all over. Heartache, headache, backache. It will be very, very painful, and I'm not kidding you. So don't, don't do that. Don't reject the desires. Instead, all I'm saying is see all these objective desires. They're going to play out or they won't. That's not, we don't need to be concerned about it. In fact, I would suggest the less, the less concerned you are about it, the better. Because all we can do is make things worse, not make things better in that regard. Well, sort of. Anything that we do, which is all from our conditioned mind, is only going to make things worse, no matter what we think. But the point here is to see that the, what, what is it that we really want? So you say, I, well, I want the better house or the better spouse or the better whatever else. Okay, I want these things. And if I could get those things, then I would be satisfied. But then hopefully you can recognize, no, it doesn't work that way. You wouldn't actually get the satisfaction. So it's already plainly obvious. But what is it that you really want? Look and see. You want 
you clearly want that satisfaction, isn't that right? I mean, that's the only true aim. Okay, so remember, I promised you that what it is that you truly want, which is that true satisfaction, it's already here. And it's not at a distance and you can't do anything for it and you can't earn it and you can't deserve it and you can't buy it and you can't find it somewhere else. It's right here. Okay, so the mind may be not so sure about that, but let's just take a look again. So notice right now that you're aware of whatever it is that's happening. So if the mind, if there's mind activity, you're aware of the mind activity. And if there's sensation, you're aware of the sensation. And if there's memory, you're aware of the memory. And notice that all of those things that you're aware of, those are all movements. They come and go, right? That's their nature. You can see none of them stays around constantly forever. They come and they go. So you have a memory comes and then it goes. You have a feeling comes and then it goes. You have a thought comes, it goes, so forth and so on. And so all of these things that we're aware of, they come and they go. And that's the nature of what it is. The things that we're aware of is that they have to be their movements. If they're not movements, then this uh, mode of awareness can't register them because it's only calibrated to register movement. That's its nature. Notice I said this mode of awareness. I'm not saying awareness, period. But this mode of awareness that we are so uh, accustomed to, habituated to, it only registers movement. So then notice what happens. You, you're aware of all these things. Now, anything that you can be aware of, you can just see it comes and it goes. It does, it's not always here. So it's a movement. It's, it's transitory. So you can just immediately see that it's an object of awareness and that it's appearing and it's disappearing in, we'll say something. But there's something you don't have most likely, some of you more so than others, because some of you I know you've been cultivating this, but m most of the time we have not cultivated this uh, other mode in which we can register, be aware of that which is not moving. This is self-awareness. So when I say self, of course, most of the time, because we're accustomed, habituated only to this mode of awareness that registers change, movement, we just think, oh, well, what does that mean? We have ideas and images and memories and thoughts and beliefs and so forth, all things that are moving and changing. But this is self and we'll just differentiate it, you know, capital S self, okay? We'll do that funny thing. But it's capital S self. So this is the non-changing self, the eternal self. Well, this usual habitual mode of awareness can't register that because it's not changing. You are that which is unchanging. You are that un unchanging in which all the change is occurring. This is obvious, right? You're the one who's aware. But when you look to see who are you, look right now, I have to remind you, look right now and see who am I? Wait. Say, so, well, I'm right here. But this comes and goes, doesn't it? It's an object of awareness. It's moving. It's changing. You say, well, it seems pretty constant, but it's not constant. You close your eyes. Where did it go? And you say, well, that's, come on now. It's a little bit childish, isn't it? Be you like a child. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm just, you know, wiser people than me have pointed out that it's 
it, our sophistication of this uh, adult mind is very good for some things. But at this thing, this most essential thing, which is to know ourselves and to be truly satisfied and rest in that, it's useless. In fact, it's worse than useless. It, it constantly takes us in the wrong direction because it's only calibrated to recognize change. So, but you notice a child, a very young child, a baby, you know, like peekaboo, it's a funny game because it's, because that's something that's real for that child. Like it actually is going away. Something's actually coming and going. And so you can see that that's true, actually. Just in your, in, if you're innocent for a moment and you close the eyes, where does this body go? All you're left with now is sensation, and thought, and mental image, but not this external image. You open the eyes, what is added? Image. So what is the, the body is an image? Well, kind of. But you wouldn't be said. You wouldn't. You wouldn't think so, would you? You say, no, 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 no. It's the body. It's here. It's objective. It's real. And I'm this. Again, close the eyes for a moment. Where did it go? It's not here. So what's here when you close the eyes, in, in regard to what we consider to be the body, is actually just sensation and mental image. So then, what is the body? The body is is mental image external image, sensation. We could maybe add some other things if we really wanted to figure that out, but I think we can keep it simple. And you just recognize that's what it, that's its constituent parts. Independent of that, there's nothing there. So I don't believe that. No, well, you just test it out. You see what else is there? You have ideas about it. That's it. Ideas, sensation, images. So who is this self? Who are you? When you close the eyes, the image goes away. Are you still here? Try it out. I'm, I'm asking you. I'm inviting you to do this. You might say oh, that sounds totally stupid. Yes. And how much of how many stupid things do you do in a day? I promise you many. So just try this. Close the eyes. Are you still here? Clearly, yes. So here we've just demonstrated you're not the image of the body. Has to be the image of the body disappears. You're still here. Okay. Now, notice for a moment, just be aware, there are thoughts about the body, right? Then say, well, the body's here, the body's here, this is my body, the body's in this place, the body's on this surface, the body's feeling this way, this is my body, and all these thoughts about the body. My head is on top of my neck, my neck is on top of my whatever, you know, it's like you have all these thoughts, okay? So now just observe, the thoughts about the body, but then notice that these thoughts come and go, right? And in between, there's, if you really slow it down and you just observe very carefully, you'll see in between, what is there in between these thoughts about the body? If you're really, really watching very carefully, then what happens, and it's not because you're trying to stop the thoughts, but you'll find thoughts actually stop, and the thoughts disappear. So you find what's in between these thoughts? Ah, this, this absence of thought. Now, it only take you might say, but the thoughts otherwise seem so just to be continuous. Yes, but all you take, all it takes is one moment in uh, to have a disappearance of the thoughts to demonstrate. that 
the thought, so not here, I am. So no thought, yet I am. No image, yet I am. Okay, so what's left? Sensation, well, I don't know. You might say that's a difficult one, I'm always feeling. See, we can do the same thing, you know, it, it might be easier for some people and not as easy for other people, but you could certainly give it a go. You could just observe the sensation. I mean, you can notice the sensations are kind of, there's a movement to the sensations. I mean, they're not, there's not just a constant of one sensation. There's an ebb and flow of a single sensation. And then that sensation kind of fades away and a different sensation appears and so you can see first and foremost that the sensation is a movement. And then you can notice the same, we can do the same as we did with thought, which is you just observe what's between the sensations. So you notice there's just this sort of flow of sensation, 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 sensations, like a pulsation. And between each pulsation, what's there? Just slow it down and observe. And you might find, uh, similar to the thoughts, that there's a slowing down, a stopping, or a disappearance of the sensation just for a moment. But that's all it takes is one moment, the disappearance of sensation, to demonstrate I am even when sensation is not. Now, if you don't, you say, well, that doesn't work for me. Well, you just keep at it. You just keep exploring that and you'll find sooner or later. And you could also just notice that there are plenty of times when there's no sensation. You, even during the waking state, there are plenty of times when there's no sensation, but especially deep sleep. No sensation in deep sleep. So what else could there be? You know, anything, anything else we could say that it is this that, that, that I am this body and that this body is composed of, I don't know what else that would be, but we could certainly deconstruct it in a similar way. But here we've deconstructed these main, the main pillars of this structure. So now there's no structure, can't stand. So we can just tell the truth, which is I am not this body. Ooh. The body is an idea. Well, we've already seen that there can be an that there can be an absence of thought, and yet I am. So, n not only does that prove that the I'm not the body, it also proves I'm not the mind. Because what is the mind other than thought? I'm not the body. I'm not the mind. Okay. Well, so yeah, but you have to look and see this for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. So now look and notice what's here and see that in order to glimpse this, there has to be, a, it's a different mode of awareness. It's not, the, it's not the habitual familiar mode because that familiar mode just consults the mind. It's registering change. So it's comparing against some past res, repository of knowledge. But that doesn't do us any good here because the, the, the mind just draws a blank. If we consult the mind, well, what's here? The mind's like, oh, I don't know. I have no idea. It must be nothing. That's what the mind says. So you can fall for that. But I would encourage you not to bother. Just stay here. Just stay with the obviousness. Even in the absence of knowing in the mind, I am. Can't really deny it. Not really. The mind can say the words. 
the mind can make arguments, but in truth, if you're really just sincere and innocent, and, and oh, here's a helpful one. If you honestly, if you just, if you're fed up with suffering, if you've just had enough, you become desperate, which means hopeless. So you have, but you have to be, you have to see that through all the way. You have to be willing to honestly stop grasping at hope because all that hope exists in the normal way. The normal way is just to grasp at things in the mind and compare and rearrange the furniture. It's not going to give you what you really want because what you really want is not found there. But what you really want is found here already. That's, that's what I promised you from the start. So if you keep doing what you always habitually do, which will be familiar, thereby it will seem easy, albeit painful, but it will seem, you know, this is the, this is the trickery is says, well, if it's familiar, it's easy. And therefore I should just do that. And if it's unfamiliar, then it's hard and I can't do that. And, and, and then it does this thing where it says, well, I've heard it's supposed to be effortless. And this seems like it's very effortful, but that's a trick. It's a distortion. This is completely effortless, but that doesn't mean it's comfortable. It's completely unfamiliar. You have to understand that it's, well, for some of you, it's not completely unfamiliar, but for many, it's completely unfamiliar. And for the rest of us, it's mostly unfamiliar. Enough that we still don't have confidence. We still succumb to the doubts. But you have to understand that this is, this has to be, you have to see how important it is. Um, you know, when you're, it's like, You know, your life is at stake. And you have to use your intelligence to clearly eliminate those things that are not going to work and then refuse to do that. So that's the way to force yourself. Sounds rather violent, sorry. But that's the way to force yourself because look, it's not here, I mean, it, understand, I, I'm not all of a sudden advocating for violence, but what I am saying is that we do need to be firm, okay? If we're, if, we're, uh, if we're not firm in our resolve, we'll fall for the trickery of the mind over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over. every time that it brings up the same excuse but with a slightly different twist which it can do forever we'll fall for it but that's why we have to use our intelligence and be very firm in our resolve that i will not do those things anymore because they only lead to suffering and i can't take a single crumb more of suffering because my very life is at stake you have to see it that seriously that if just one more crumb of suffering and it will be the it will be too much so don't you can't allow that you have to be that firm in your resolve you have to take it very seriously because otherwise we find so many excuses so now you you see that the mind when the mind is, again, out of habit consulted because we say, well, see what's here. And immediately, because it's familiar, we go to the mind. Well, what is here? And the mind says, I don't know. Or it throws up some thing that it's learned, right? You know, it says, oh, it's awareness, it's consciousness, it's this, it's that, you know, what a, okay. But see, the, you have to be very, very, very honest and see None of those things do me any good. Those are all, it's like reading them, trying to eat the menu, right? To use Papaji's 
expression. So we're, we have to tell the truth, you know, here, it's like, you know, again, to paint the picture, it's like your life is at stake, you're starving, right? You're starving, you're starving for reality, you're starving for peace, you're starving for rest. You're starving for real, true nourishment. And here it is, it's right here. But instead of taking this, which is what will really nourish, out of habit, you reach for the menu and start chomping away. That's what we keep doing. So we have to see it and then refuse to do that. So the refusal is not another doing. It's simply in the seeing, in the seeing, we then notice the, in, the tendency to indulge that compulsion, and we don't. That's why it's effortless. But it's, an, it's a process of gaining skill in inhibition. So that's why I say it's a, it's a path that is not well developed, which is why it's unfamiliar and uncomfortable. And, it, and the mind says it's effortful, but the mind is confused. The mind thinks that just because it's uncomfortable and unfamiliar, that means it's effortful. It's not true. You have to look and see. The indulgence of the habits is effortful, albeit familiar. So you don't notice that you're making the effort. And to, to become aware of the effort and to relax the tendency to make that effort seems to the mind effortful, but it's not. So that's why we're just observing. We just see these tendencies to try and figure this out in the mind and notice how much effort that involves and then just relax that. And then start to notice again, what is really here. So who are you? Look and see, who am I? And if I don't indulge those habits of looking to mind, if I'm not grasping at thought, which is effortful, If I'm not trying to figure it out, if I'm not trying to protect myself, if I'm not making any effort, Here's the promise. I, it's the, I can extend the promise to you because it's, I, it's, it's rock solid. You know, this is not just from me. This is, this is from every master that this is 100% trustworthy. It's here. It has you. It is you. And you don't have to do anything for it, but in order to really fully recognize it and trust and accept, you have to be willing to give up everything that you do that is anything other than simply being this. So, The beauty of it is all you have to do is just be here and watch. So you see everything that comes up, you know, there's just one thing after another, after another. Is it this? Is it that? Am I in the right place? Should I be doing something else? Is this stupid? Is this good? Maybe I can't do it. Maybe I need to do something else. What time is it? Am I hungry? Oh, I, do I have an appointment? What should I, you know, what am I... What am I, what's happening next week? I don't remember. You know, it just keeps on bringing up stuff. And all you have to do is just see it. That's it. And see the, the truth, which is that all of that is so familiar and so miserable. And it's everything that you don't want. And all of that is completely 
uh, it doesn't even begin to touch. It's, it doesn't it doesn't affect in the least this pristine okayness that's here now already. So we're starting to we're cultivating this ability to start to recognize in this other mode, this mode of what is changeless. We have to be gentle. We have to, it's a somewhat delicate process. We can't go about it forcefully. We have to just let it happen. So you just said there's a kind of discomfort or uncertainty or fuzziness or some something that happens and you're not you're like in this liminal state. You're not sure what am I awake? Am I asleep? What's happening? Good. That's very good. That then you're not, this is that. This is that uh, foundational place from which you can perceive clearly where you don't have to do anything. So you notice all the change. That's easy. No problem. Very skilled at that. And then you just notice what's here. That's not a movement, that's not changing, that's not an object. And you notice that that's who you are. And you, then you see the attempt of the mind to grasp it. Well, is it this, is it that? It, what's he talking about? Is he talking about the, is he talking about the, the Atman? Is he talking about the soul? What's he talking about? Is he talking, you know? And so you notice that change movement, and then you notice this, which is simply here, awake, aware, being, formless. And you notice I am this. And notice that this is already that satisfaction that you most deeply desire. It's really important you can see that. Maybe only just for one instant, but you have to glimpse it for at least an instant. Give yourself that. You don't try. If you're trying, you miss it, but you, you release, surrender, relax into it, and then you, it's here to be seen. And it's your nature to see, so it happens. You just allow it for one instant, make no effort, and then you'll simply see, this is the fulfillment that I so deeply desire. In everything, in everything that I do, this is what I'm really wanting. This is the true fulfillment. It's actually, you know, when, you, when you've had a difficult day and you, start to drift off to sleep and maybe you have that sense of relief. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same fulfillment. There are no problems here. All the fulfillment is here. Everything is completely resolved here. The difference between that and this is that here, there's a quality of awakeness that's not the same as in falling asleep. But you see, it takes everything, everything, resolves into this. So you have this one <clears throat> glimpse at least. Now what happens usually is the mind says, okay, but what do I do with that? It says, yeah, fine, whatever. Okay, that's great. I mean, yes, it's re relief. Yes, it's satisfaction for one instant. Who cares? What good is that going to do me? That's what the mind says. Fair enough. Because I say it's fair enough, because if it's, if it's true, 
what I'm saying, then it has to it has to be able to provide that fulfillment at all times. Can't it has to be unconditional. So the mind says, well, then I win because it's ha ha, it's it's not, I don't experience it always. Well, not so fast. Remember, you're like you're you're starving. Your life is at stake. So don't be so quick to think that you already know the right answer, because if you did, you wouldn't be starving, you see. So we have to be willing to not just accept the mind's arguments. Instead, let's actually take a look and see for ourselves. So, okay. Now let's look again, this fulfillment is here. The satisfaction is what we're truly longing for, what we truly desire, it's already here. But then when the mind comes back in, it starts judging and says, well, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid I don't, if I don't have the better house and the better car and the better financial situation and the better body and the better this, that, and the other, then I won't be okay. So then we try to reconcile this. Well, wait a second. There was a, I, I know I was glimpsing okay, profound okayness just a second ago, but boy, this is really compelling. I don't, I'm afraid if I don't have all these things, I might suffer. I might, there might be all kinds of bad things that would happen. So the mind says, well, then I need to just keep on thinking about it. Because it's a problem, I need to solve it. And the way to solve it is in the mind. And here we have to use our intelligence and tell the truth which is this, it's plain and obvious, that hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. So now it gets really scary. It was maybe scary before, but now it's really scary because now it's one thing to pause for a moment and rest and maybe experience some discomfort and some fear and anxiety, but all within a relatively safe context, at least according to the mind, because you, you know, I can control this. This is okay. I can let go for an instant. I can see for an instant, but you know, I know that I can armor myself for my warfare for the rest of my life and just whenever I need to. But now we're looking and seeing and telling the truth, which is that Okay, that satisfaction that I'm looking for in everything, it's already here. And everything that I, that I do habitually, trying to solve the problems that are in mind, which is all using mind to try and solve mind, does not work. So now the invitation is extended to give up trying to use the mind to solve the mind and to turn to and rely and trust fully in the true satisfaction that is actually what you're looking for and then to uh, let that ride essentially just to see you know, my way hasn't worked out. But here is what I'm already looking for. It already exists. It's already here. What if I just trust that? Now, to the mind, this seems like a suicide mission because it says, well, I can't, can't do that. That's insane. If I do that, then I'm not going to work my job and I'm not going to deal with these 
miserable people in my family who are always bothering me. And if I don't do that, I'm not going to bother paying my bills and I'm going to be homeless. And if I don't do that, you know, it's like on and on and on. It's all these things. So it's advocating for its importance. But actually, it's not even true. You can't really know that until you're willing to put it to the test, but you'll see, I promise you, if you're willing to put it to the test, that actually what's happening is that this is not an outside in thing, it's an inside out thing. So we think it's outside in, meaning we think that we exist in this objective reality and that it's attacking us and we have to work from the inside to protect ourselves. But what is actually happening is not that. What's actually happening is that we don't know this external world at all. And all we know is our armor, our defenses. And we're so certain that we know the external world. We are so certain. We really, really, really believe that. But you start taking a look and you'll see, actually, you don't know anything about the external world. You don't know anything about anybody. You don't know anything about anything. All you know is your ideas. And your ideas are simply the pieces of the armor that you use in order to reinforce and maintain your sense of limitation and suffering. Thereby, it's absolutely no surprise that that's exactly what you continue to experience. So this true fulfillment, notice it again. Just allow yourself to rest and experience it for a moment. Notice that this, this, what I'm calling your true fulfillment, this self with a capital S, consciousness. That it is, it's, it is fulfillment, but it's also, it's also rest, it's also ease, it's also happiness, it's also joy. And what, you just have to look and see right now, tell the truth, what is, how could war how could war be an authentic expression of this? If you just allow yourself to really stay here, to trust in this, how will, how will war arise in you? You see that the war has to come about because of some because there's been some leap made. It's a distortion. It's like there's some ignorance because there is a leap made to some conclusion, some idea that's false. And war springs out of that. But here, this satisfaction right now, how will war arise out of this? When you know this, when you, when you know I am this, what will provoke war? 
You don't need anything. You can't lack anything. Nothing can be taken from you. You see, take whatever you want. Even this so-called body of mine. What, is, what difference does it make? But then you see, this seems so absolutely terrifying to the mind because the mind, and understandably, it has a, you know, its prime directive is keep this body safe. So then how do we reconcile these two things? Because it seems like they're just irreconcilable. Well, this is our purpose, I guess you could say. It's our, it's the, it's what we're here to explore and discover. Is to allow, you know, this true fulfillment to express even here in this appearance of this individual in this mind that has this, has all this programming that says, fight, defend, protect. And so that's the next step. You know, the first step is that we, which is rare. So what a gift that we, we can even do that much. This first step is to recognize I am. that I am, this true fulfillment is here. I don't have to do anything for it. I don't have to go anywhere for it. I don't have to be fearful that I'll lose it. It's here I am. So this is step one. It's the essential first step. Without this, the second step is of no use, but that is step one. And then step two is to allow this recognition to blossom into expression, even through this mind and body. Because we're not going to just throw off the mind and body and float off into some celestial realm right now. We're here for Whoever, I don't know, We're, but all I can tell you, I don't know why. That's not my, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> but I can tell you for sure that this is happening. And that there's perfection. And that's not something that I have exclusive access to. I'm showing you that you have access to that too. You can recognize the perfection. This is all of this is happening in that perfection. It can't be other than that perfection. That perfection is the step one. Step one is just to notice I am, to notice that I am, even when all other things disappear, I am. So I am is changeless. I am is motionless. I am is formless. I am. And this is just here. It's who you are. Step two is to really invite, and this is a very uh, bold move, but it's obviously needed. And we know it's needed because we're called to it. I mean, we feel that, that we feel that in our lives. We feel that, that pressure. And we experience that as discomfort or pain or all these things. But if you just tell the deeper truth about it, it's just the urging, the prompting of this movement to express authentically. And so we feel that. That's why we're here. There's something we feel like, why wow, God, there's something that has to happen. So what is that something that has to happen? It's not something from the mind. It's not something, because we've exhausted that. It's something that comes from I am. So now step two is from 
this recognition that I am, to trust this fully and, uh, and allow this to shine forth into expression through this body, through this mind. So imagine now that happening. Imagine the full and free expression of this divine perfection, peace, and clarity through this body, this mind, these relationships. And see, what happens is that there, this I am is pristine. Hopefully you notice that it's pristine, it's wide open, it's beautiful, it's this pure light. And then we, as soon as we start to imagine that it, it's expressing through this body and mind, then we say, whoa, hold on, wait a second. So now we're seeing these are the limitations. Now, what are these limitations? Are they externally imposed? Well, no. You can just see for yourself, where, where are they coming from out there? No, they're just part of this puzzle of this strange, bizarre phenomenon of this conditioning, and you just see it. Just see it and see that this pure light of awareness actually shines on this and begins to make it transparent. You, it may, the conditioning may still be here, but it's like, it's like you're holding something a transparency to the window and the light shines through it. So is there still something on there? Yes, but now you see it in a new way that you see, oh, the, but the light is there. The light is shining through. This is now transparent. So you just see, yes, here are these thoughts, these beliefs, these images, these habits, these patterns, these memories, all of this is here. And what needs to be done? Nothing, just see it, it's happening. Because in the seeing of it, you're seeing what it is and you're seeing it in the light of who you are. The light of who you are is far greater than what that is. You see, who you are is this pure light. Anything that is seen is seen by virtue of that light shining upon it. It is an object of awareness. You are the awareness. So it, it cannot limit you. So here we just continue to recognize again, one more time, this pure light of awareness. Just notice it here. You don't have to turn to the mind for agreement. You just notice it. If you just drop the mind for a half a second, just for half a second, you know, Without, before the next thought, you just notice what's here. It's wide open. It's pure. It's no problem at all. It's so completely satisfied. And then imagine this pure consciousness that you are expressing fully and freely through this mind and this body and these relationships. And you just notice whatever happens, whatever is provoked by that, and you just see it, that's it. You don't have to fix it. You don't have to figure it out. You just see it and see, oh yeah, that's, that's it. It's just a habit. It's just a belief. It's just some conditioning. And then notice, and I'll point this out and then we'll wrap up for today's formal portion is notice the 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 we'll call it power the power of i am just feel that for a moment that vast limitless reality 
And notice that this is always here at the heart of being. It's always here at the heart of you. You don't have to seek it out. You don't have to do something for it. It's always here and it's infinite. And this is infinitely more powerful than anything else. So that's why you can trust it. It's always here and it's more powerful than anything. So then when you encounter things in your life where you notice, you know, it's all, it's fine and good and wonderful to do this for an hour, but what about the rest of your life? That's where this needs to really be applied. So you have this recognition, hopefully, but then you have to keep returning to the recognition and putting it into practice and trusting it to see that it's trustworthy because otherwise the doubt continues to overwhelm you, but you have to keep trying, trying it out for, you know, when you encounter some stress, when you encounter some uh, fear, when you encounter some conflict, when you're encountering some worry, okay, when these things happen, then at least for just a moment, pause and just notice I am. Notice the complete fulfillment of I am. And then just see what happens if you just allow it to, the power of this to dissolve whatever is appearing. This can radically change your life in so many ways it, at a material level it can change things but at all levels it can change things because it starts to put like you we have everything inverted and this starts to put it in the right order so that as i say we perceive that it's an outside in thing that there are things outside that are oppressing and attacking us and we have to protect ourselves but when you put this, when you dare to put this into practice sincerely, when you're willing to actually notice that I am, notice the truth of I am, which is, it has no defenses because it has no need of defense. And you remain with this truth even in the face of the compulsion to take up arms and engage in the war, every time you do that, even if just for a moment, even if just for a second, better if longer, but even if just for a second, it starts to, to switch things, put them in the right order. So you start to realize what's really going on here, that all of this that I think I know of the external world is a complete fabrication that there is no such thing. Now, I'm not saying there's no external world. I'm saying I, what I think of as the external world, that does not exist other than in my imagination. So I'm, it's a, it's all becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think that these are all the things I need to protect myself from. And so thereby I continue to armor myself, which then provides me with more evidence. And then I think, well, look, other, you know, they say so on the news and these people agree with me and such and such and so on and forth. And what happens though, is that I'm building up this fortress that merely reflects back to me my own ideas. It's all delusion. So to put this into practice begins to shine the light and it becomes transparent. And then we start to see that through these, through the conditioning that out there is also the same light. It's one light. And it's only appears to be separated by this illusional fortress of notions. So as always, thank you.
And uh, for those who are here live, we'll stay on for the Q&A. So let me just end this recording.